I was shook to find out in that affluent little suburb as you enter the supposedly sleepy town of Swakopmund that people had built their luxury homes on the mass graves of Namibians who were murdered by German soldiers in concentration camps between 1904 and 1908. Yes, my people, in this our Namibia, this Herero man's fight to honor the graves of his ancestors has been met with death threats and denial. He started in 2015, and um, whereby um, uh, we there's a, a, a marine Dengmar monument in, in, in the center of a town, and there it is having the names of the German colonial soldiers, and uh, also the name of the villages and the dates and the year. And um, there's also two villages on, on the monument, Oshina Maparero and uh, Okanjira. It's where my great-grandfather used to stay. And uh, I, I wrote to the government to remove the monument, but they refused and so on. Because, you know, on, on, a, on that specific monument, it's, it is only commemorating the, the perpetrators because it's having all the names of the German colonial soldiers, but you don't find a single name of a victim. And uh, my great grandmother was also one of the people who was in a Sokobon concentration camps, and and I, I felt that it was really unfair for such a monument, you know, to be erected in the center of of, of a Swakopmund where, you know, a lot of people have died in concentration camps. And um, I wrote numerous letters, and I cover also the, the statue with a black uh, um, plastic, and I also was arrested and left later on. Um, I, I, I told it that, you know, the Inspector General must also be arrested because they also removed the Friday Dengma without, you know, following procedures and that's why they dropped the, ch the charges against me. Uh, actually, the, the police arrested me and then um, they took me to the church office to lay a charge against me and then I was actually refusing to give my fingerprints because I wanted to get also explanation from the police why they are arresting me. Because, you know, even the Inspector General, Sebastian, they're doing a different follow-up procedures. And then I even told them that, no, they must go and arrest their boss. And uh, the station commander phoned the Inspector General and the, the Inspector said, no, I know that guy is a problem. Just leave the guy because he will create more problem. That's how they released me. Because also after I was also um, arrested, you know, uh, uh, a lot of heroes came to that specific monument and then red paint was thrown on, on the paint. And then even police officers were standing there and they couldn't do anything because they, they thought that, you know, it would create some, I don't know, maybe a riot or something like that. But I actually also um, uh, opened a case at the International Criminal Court, and whereby I actually want to take our government to court because, you know, they, they are refusing to remove that monument which is commemorating you know, perpetrators. Because every year also the um, German communities are common, they are commemorating, they are gathering there. And um, um, there was a certain time when I uh, brought some, you know, radical young people, and then we stopped them. And then the special field force came, and they said, "Oh, Laidlaw is you again? What's the problem?" And so on. Then I explained to them that, you know, on that specific monument, it's they they wrote that they killed the people in the name of God, and so on. And then they were questioning the the Germans who was there, and then. Then they explained exactly what, what I was also saying, and that what was written there, that uh, they were killing rebellious heroes and so on. It's because it's everything has been recorded on the monument, you know. And then the um, special free force, they started to cock their guns and they said, you guys must go off. And so, but now I also received some, you know, phone call from prominent leader in the government. They said that now the statue must be, must remain because Germany is the biggest, you know, donors and so on. And, but we are going next week to, to um, we are going to make sure that that monument will go off because we are also getting support from Germans in Germany and uh, there's a lot of activists also there from Germany themselves. We are in Germany who wants this specific, specific monument to go off. And uh, the most painful thing is, is um, you know, uh, the grave of my sisters was very huge and some of their the grave was they were demolished and houses were built on a former grave of our sisters. I uh, wrote letters to the president, to the former minister of uh, urban, uh, urban uh, rural development, Pia Mushalenga, as well as to the current president. And they are also basically investigating, and even the Office of Ombudsman, they are investigating. And um, 
because they didn't follow procedures. And normally, if you are closing a, a grave, you must write a letter to the ministers and the minister must approve it. But, you know, they just, you know, some of the graves were really desecrated, you know, were demolished and without even consulting the genocide affected communities. And so, um, and every, since 2015, I've been, uh, we've been remolting those sands of the grave and um, we have been cleaning because the municipality doesn't want to employ uh, people to work there. But it's next to the, uh, the grave of ancestors at the German colonial uh, soldiers' grave. They have been employed permanent people who are taking care of which is really unfair. Um, but a good thing is um, we also wrote a letter to the German uh, government and um, uh, there's a possibility that we are going to receive uh, funding from the German government because uh, you know, we told them that uh, our ancestors during 1904, so, you know, they were German citizens. So why is the German government only funding um, the uh, German colonial soldiers through the war grave commissions, German war grave commissions? So, um, so this year we are going to, because uh, they have sent us application forms so that they can fund us for that. And I think it's a great achievement from our, our side. And, and also we really want to thank the German government for accepting, you know, what the German colonial soldiers did to our ancestors at the Swakopmund concentration camps. Namibian PhD candidate Froven Becker answered a call by Laidlaw to help to restore dignity to the graves and was also shocked to discover what lies under the foundations of some of the houses in Kremersdorf. I knew something about it, but, but not for a long time. I'd come across Laidlaw and the graves before on a Redfish documentary that was shot a few years ago. And so I was familiar with, with Laidlaw and what he was doing. I was not aware of the location. I didn't, yeah, I didn't know that they were right there next, next, to, the, next to the cemetery. The thing that struck me the most probably was the fact that there's like really prime property bordering or encroaching onto the, onto the graves. That was the most shocking. And it's a vast area, I mean, it's it's crazy looking at it. Probably thousands of people buried there, just unacknowledged. Artist turned human rights activist Laid Loperinganda has lobbied both the Namibian and the German governments to honor the deaths of those Namibians who died in concentration camps during the genocide between 1904 and 1908. Some businesses in Swakopmund further fuel the flames of discontent amongst aggrieved community members by displaying symbols that celebrate the murder of human beings. Yeah, there's a lot of, you know, uh, you know, when, when a German and Namibian government removed the right at Dengmal, there's a replica at the Astad restaurant. And I even told the owner of the restaurant to remove it. And he refused. I went to uh, lay a case against him at the police. And um, the dog is, is at the Prosecutor General um, Martha Imawa. So they are actually going to uh, check whether the guy can be prosecuted, but he actually violated um, uh, rhetorical acts and as well as the constitution, so even Article 23 verse Article 23.1. And there's also an issue of the out of Bismarck image at the Bismarck Medical Center. And as we know very well, out of Bismarck is a gentleman that they have organized the Berlin Conference of 1884-85. And and uh, to divide the African continent. And we don't know why that particular gentleman went to put uh, his image at, in front of the um, medical center. And um, as you know very well, some of uh, like the Naman heroes, some of them have actually inherited you know, transgenerational traumas, um, you know, from our sisters who went through a traumatic experience through a genocide. And, and uh, he actually wrote to me and he said that 90% of his patients are uh, legs so you know being a doctor who knows about mental health you know i feel to understand why you know he's displaying that you know we wrote a letter to the minister of um health that um Galubi Shangola to investigate he didn't investigate to report to the office of the presidents i'm actually having a letter i can even show to you and uh, we actually want the the minister to be you know dismissed because he's not you know, following the, um, the, uh, the Health Act. The Health Act is actually saying that, you know, within 21 days, 
he's supposed to summon the the owner of the hospital but you know we don't know why he's doing like that and uh, i think we were going to take also legal actions against uh, colombia and uh, we also the Rongo governors actually also sent an email they want to discuss this issue so that maybe it must not go to a court so we are actually um, waiting for the governor to so we can iron out these things you know i asked them both to share their views on how government has handled the reparations negotiations with the german government yeah we we feel very bad you know even before this whole thing started we even told our government that no we want to be uh, part and parcel of discussion we also the affected community must part of the discussions and then maybe the Namibian government must just, you know, be an observer. And uh, but they, you know, sidelined us and decided to, to have a, a special uh, uh, Namibian envoy, uh, Dr. Sad um was also my uncle. May his soul rest in peace. But, but we, I didn't agree with what this, because for me, I feel that he was a sellout, you know, he was on more on the side of the government. So, um, yeah, we feel that it's, it's we have been silent because there's a lot of th things that we want to also to raise with the German government, um, particularly the, the land issues and some other stuff. Yeah. So uh, I think they did their exclude us deliberately. How they've handled it terribly. That's quite, I think that's a, that's a fair assessment. It's where I come from personally we didn't learn about the genocide ever whether that was at school i was at a german private school in Vintuk. Um so it was all portrayed in a way that seemed objective if you like and a lot of the details and a lot of i mean more or importantly the gruesome details were just swept under the rug and i guess that's a lot of what the government's also been doing post-independence and that's one of the major issues that that Laidlaw also has is dealing with just government pushback on trying to draw attention to this. Laidlaw took me to see the graves and the housing developments that were allowed to be made there.
What I find particularly interesting is the fact that there are those amongst us who deny the fact that the genocide ever existed or took place. And the unfortunate majority of them can trace their relatives to those murderers and are proud of their heritage. I asked PhD candidate and resident of Swakopmund of German heritage, Froven Becker, to unpack this for me. Yeah, I mean, and there are plenty of them. It strikes, it's just the mere fact that when I speak to people about it, the fact that I'm German Namibian and don't deny it surprises people. So that <laughs> really tells its own story. Um, but it's more, yeah, I think there's a, there's a gross neglect on an educational level. It's, it doesn't get taught in schools across the board. Um, and there's a lot of, as far as the German community goes, if you walk into bookstores here in Swakop, for example, you'll find literature trying, trying to disprove um, the fact that it was a genocide or is being labeled as such with all kinds of mathematics, trying to just crunch the numbers on how many people were actually lost. And it's, yeah, it's, it's absurd. And it's, there's a lot of German literature that covers that period in history that's obviously extremely biased. And that's informed the German population here and then cling, clinging to it desperately. Yo, I have always been living my best life in the seaside town of Swakopmund, oblivious to the evil that lurks there. But the ones who live there have a whole other experience compared to those of us who are tolerated on account of our vacation vibes. Yeah, racism, you know, it's, it's a big issue here in, in Swakopmund. You know, there's also certain, um, like, certain restaurants where Black people are not supposed to go. Or even when you go there, also to some, you know, you can see that the way they are staring at you, you, you feel unwelcome and so on. Um, but I, I think, you know, maybe a hundred years from now, things will change, but we are always vocal about that, you know. I have also received some, you know, death threats from neo-Nazis members since what government, you know, telling me that they will assassinate me because I'm too, you know, too much against Germans, but I'm not against Germans, you know, I just want changes. I want us to live in harmony, you know, we, you know, it's really, if you even see Diashi, it's another concentration camp, like most of the descendants of the children whose um, parents was in a concentration, some of them are that confined to Swakopmund concentration, I mean, Diashi, informal settlements, where the children of the perpetrators are having expensive houses, they're living in luxuries, and, um, they are even paying some of those people, you know, meager salary and so on. So um, we actually want, you know, changes to come to uh, um, to Swakopman. And uh, it's a big battle, but, you know, I think it's, in, 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 in the long run, we are going to, um, to overcome this. And I'm also very happy that um, there will be also an exhibition at the Swakopman Museum. Um, of, uh, uh, I feel there's like some group of Germans who are based in Swakopmund who also want the issue of the Swakopmund concentration camps to, to be put, to be, to be exposed. Because there's a lot of denialists like, you know, you know, Germans from here who said that there was never a concentration camps. We know, know, oh, we know very well also Woman Brock was also having a, a private concentration camps and other businesses that uh, they have profited from, you know, slavery here in Swakopmund. And uh, there's also some of the Germans here who thinks that these things have to come to light. You know, the, the past must be told that, you know, it must be exposed, yeah. There's another place that I think is uh, Peter Antiqui was also having those stuff. And um, there was also some auctions from uh, another Swak of Mon auctions where they were selling, you know, swastikas and some, you know, Nazi memorable billiards and so on. And it is very shocking that, you know, you know, after 30 years of, you know, independence, you find people who are still stick to, you know, things which is, you know, uh, I, I don't understand their mind, you know, they are stick to the past. Yeah. Swakop is the epitome of, of colonial nostalgia in this country. It's, and the the whole situation around the cemetery and the unmarked graves encapsulates that quite accurately because you have 
property that's encroaching, that's also inhabited by German Namibians, onto graves that just don't get any attention, that no one cares about, that could that could be commemorated within a few months. Because I mean, it's not it's not a lack of resources; it's a it's a lack of will. Um, and Swakop, the entire town, its character is built on colonial nostalgia. I mean, it is the product of colonialism, right? And if you go to certain restaurants here, it's being maintained. So across and through generations, there's just been no desire to kind of change the identity of Swakop. I'm a bit more cynical, I guess, on that front. It's, I'm, I'm not particularly optimistic that it is possible. It's just because I grew up with, with, within that community that causes a lot of, or if not all of the racial tension. It is purely, I mean, it's purely, purely white supremacy that you see yourself as someone better someone more intelligent and someone who should, who should be governing instead of the other way around, that you shouldn't be subjugated to, to anyone, particularly not to any other race. I asked Froven Becker whether he thinks that there's any hope of this generation living a life free of isms, particularly racism. I mean, I hope that people, that the, German community in this town, in this country, come around. But I mean, it, it comes down to a lot of things. It's a lot of people have asked me questions of whether, whether I feel like it's changing, um, whether it's a generational thing. I don't think it is because there's nothing in place. It's a structural thing that is being maintained. So you can't expect anything to change without really radically addressing the issue. I mean, it starts off with the land issue, right? Redistributing land, which we still own a lot of and feel very entitled to. And it's part of, it's part of what drives these colonial attitudes as well, is you have these pockets of rural German communities that are so isolated and have been allowed to just exist in isolation and have just carried these attitudes forward from, from, from the early 1900s. When, you, when I page to colonial texts, old German texts, it's the one thing that kind of shocks me the most is how little has changed in, in attitudes. Stuff that I read from back then that people still say today. I guess, no, I, I mean, I, I sincerely hope that, that Swako particularly um, makes a more concerted effort to shed its German identity and move into a more inclusive direction. Whether that's, again, I don't, I don't have much hope for it, but 